Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lou. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Don't you blow out the candles, guys. Here's to five more. So that's a birthday cake for who? That's a birthday cake for whoops. Whoa, it was. <laughs> that says happy birthday and thank you for your service and for Well that's nice. Thank you. Um, can you do me a favor? He doesn't expect this, but today's his 89th birthday. Can you guys sing can you sing happy birthday to this guy? On three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Johnson. Happy birthday to you. Let's give him a hand. Hi, Ruthie. It was a good flight, hon. Wish you were here. Can I give her a big smoochie? Yeah. yeah. How's that? Huh? Okay. One of the most compelling of those stories came from D-Day veteran Lewis Johnson, a Navy vet who manned a machine gun as he landed on Omaha Beach. It was the worst day of my life. Johnson and Capetto are now a team, sharing these stories at schools. Capetto showing students the taped history and Johnson being history. What do you think you told them that they needed to know? The carnage. The, the killing, the maiming, uh, the blood. You don't get that in history books. Well, thank you. You're welcome, sir. I've been crying. I, I can't help it, it, it just... I try to get through these uh, talks without choking up or crying, but even after all of these years, I still cry. The, uh, the memory is still there. I still have nightmares. I'm so blessed, I mean, to have freedom to come home every day. We're getting ready here at uh, Mead High School in Longmont, Colorado. And the students are getting ready to come in and we're gonna have a great program today. And uh, Lou's all set in his little chariot here. Just hold on to both hands. Can you guys give another warm welcome to Mr. Johnson? Here you go, Lou. I'm gonna put another microphone on you. I can't stand, but I, when I put my cap on, and I want to salute all of the people who have 
family, in the military. And I want you to go home and tell them that an old World War II veteran is still remembers and is praying for their safety. So I salute all of the people that raised their hands. I salute their friends, their family. And you tell them that this old man still thinks about them. Thank you. General Omar Bradley made a statement that every man that set foot on the beach of D-Day is a hero. I, um, I can't believe it that way. <clears throat> I've often been called a hero because of what we did, but as I look around, Larry, here are the heroes. Well, I'm very anxious to get home. Um, I want to see how Ruthie is getting along. But uh, <clears throat> I do want my parting word to uh, thank Larry for being a tremendous tour guide and a, a real gem of a guy to be with. We, uh, we had a good time together. And uh, <clears throat> I'm hoping that um, there will be uh, more of these uh, expeditions in the future. Me too. Okay.
Thank you everybody for coming today. Um, you know, on the drive over this morning, lots of time to think. In the last few days, I've been watching Return to Normandy religiously. It keeps me comfortable. It comforted me to have Lewis speaking on this great film and our return to Normandy in 2004. But I got to thinking, what could I say? I mean, to me, he was the greatest man with all of his faults that we all have. I, I am unprepared, and I'll be honest, I'm usually prepared for a speech. I'm unprepared today, but I know how meaningful he was to you and to the family, Gene, and how meaningful he was in my life. I had a very different perspective of Lewis Edward Johnson. I didn't know a lot about his baseball days. I didn't know a lot about him building homes. And every time I drive through Genesee Park, I marvel at, at what's up on the, to me it's, it's the Jetsons house, you know. But the things that he did with his life, and my part of his life was Normandy, was World War II. I met Lewis the first time at your mom and dad's house in 2003, May 19th. I was over there with my camera, and I'm listening to this man who was just 80 years old at the time, just turned 80, strong man. Talk about Omaha Beach, D-Day, what it was like after watching Saving Private Ryan, something shook loose in me and I knew I had to go to the source. I needed to find the guys that were there. And Lewis was one of many that I interviewed and he told me the story and afterwards he told me I didn't really talk about the war much but now I can't stop talking about it. And I'm so proud of him. I thought this day would never come. I thought he'd live forever. I'm serious. I lost my father when I was 10 years old. He served during Korea in the Army. Never knew anything about his experience. Never knew my dad. Lewis was a second dad to me. And Jeannie, that's okay, right? He was my adopted father. He'd call me son at times. We had so many experiences. I wish I had the time. But he really made an impact on our younger generation. A lot of the traveling that we did, we went into schools all over the country. Lewis would share his stories, and I've got documented proof of the emotion that the kids had afterwards. Some of those were in Denver schools. People waited 45 minutes to an hour to talk to him, to shake his hand, to hug him, and cried uncontrollably. The impact that he had. Our freedom, you know, I, when I think of Lewis, I think of our freedom. He's, he's a patriot. I loved his flag on West Street. I just marveled at the fact that he always had that flag out there. And it meant the world to me. And why Lewis Johnson and not all the others? Now, I got close to a lot of veterans, but Lewis was, he was always up here. You know, I'm carrying this as a crutch this morning or this afternoon because this is where my heart is with Lewis and will always be on Normandy, on, on Omaha Beach when I was there. I know he went 10 years later, amazingly, but he called this his last hurrah. He walked that beach like a youngster, and I still see that today. And that's how I'll remember him. And I'll come out here and I'll visit his grave. My mother's buried at our veteran cemetery. And I go to her grave and, and it's not the end. I know it's a new beginning for him. I feel sad for us that are here, but I'm so happy for him and Ruthie right now and, and, and what it must be like to be in heaven. So, but that's about all I wanted to say. It just, he was, he epitomized what a man is in my life and as I needed a role model in my life. And I'm just so grateful, Jeannie, for your dad. And like I said, I never would have thought all these years later, I'd be standing here today and look at all this amazing sight out here at Fort Logan Cemetery. But um, I know I'm preaching to the choir, so I'll stop. But thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for letting me share your father with the family. And I, words are not adequate to really describe all he means to me. But I got a little commemorative pen I'd like to give you. And I don't know if we could bury him with one of these. It says, lest they be forgotten, Jeannie can, can decide. I'll put that there. But I want to I give this to you. And that's just my thanks for your father. Mm -hmm.